a 58-year-old uh, female who had recurrent skin lesions over the previous <laughs> year. <laughs> Hello? Uh, keep going. Uh, she had a skin biopsy in, in March of uh, 2018. These lesions were purplish and pink in color, and when they regressed, there was some scarring. Uh, she had a bone marrow aspirin biopsy in April, a PET in May, and had a lymphoma clinic evaluation on June 25th. She, at that time, was on clobetazole. She had essential hypertension. Her exam revealed healing lesions of the right arm and leg with discount coloration and a pinkish purplish hue. Her laboratory studies were unremarkable. And may we see the radiology, please? Sure. Always the type of radiology we like to show here. Here's their PET scan. Uh, really, you see off the MIB, just uh, there's nothing. These skin lesions can be, what they do take up FDG, if they do, they can be hard to see sometimes in these cutaneous lymphoma. Uh, we, we don't really see any uh, here, and so just the big red circle showing nothing. Uh, looking on the axial images, really trying to scrutinize. Uh, we just don't see anything. So uh, just a completely normal PET scan, uh, not even any cutaneous uptake for us to uh, talk about. Thank you. So the interesting part of the case is the, it's all interesting, but is the pathology. <laughs> sure. And uh, from a pathology standpoint, this is uh, quite interesting. We'll go to the, yes, the microscope view here. And uh, so there were two separate skin biopsies uh, performed at the same time. One was from uh, upper extremity, one from uh, lower extremity, I believe. So the first specimen uh, here, uh, the uh, epidermis uh, here at the uh, top, and then the dermis down here, and you can see that there in the dermis, the superficial dermis, there's a very dense lymphoid infiltrate that is extensively epidermotropic, and the extent of this epidermotropism is, uh, will show up nicely with this stain for uh, CD3, a pan uh, T cell marker. And so all of these lymphocytes uh, are CD3 positive T cells here in the uh, dermis, and here you can see uh, quite well that uh, the, there's remarkable epidermotropism. Um, now, uh, mycosis fungoides would come into, uh, uh, into mind, but here's the stain for CD4. So you can see very few CD4 positive T cells, uh, virtually none of which are up here in the epidermis, which would be distinctly different than what you would expect for um, mycosis fungoides. Uh, there, uh, this is the stain for CD5, another pan T cell uh, antigen, if I can find the tissue. Yeah, so you can see uh, very few CD5 positive T cells uh, here in the dermis, none in the epidermis, so there's absence of CD5. Uh, here's the stain for uh, CD8, these small biopsies sometimes are hard to... Either that or a negative stain. <laughs> well, it is going to be negative. Uh, there we go. So the CD8 is negative. So you got a CD4, CD8 double negative with absence of CD5, which is a phenotype that's very nice for gamma delta T cells. So this brings in, could this be cutaneous gamma delta uh, T cell lymphoma? This is the beta F1 stain that uh, stains the beta chain of the T cell receptor, and the tumor cells are distinctly positive for that, which means these are not gamma delta uh, T cells. So it, totally blows the, the uh, potential diagnosis of uh, cutaneous gamma delta T cell lymphoma uh, out of the picture. Um, here is the stain for CD30. And what it may be a little harder to appreciate, but there is very dim staining or weak staining in the uh, epidermotropic portions uh, for CD30. Uh, but on the other hand, very strong staining down here in the dermal um, T cells. 
And this is, is a pattern that uh, Andy Feldman and colleagues uh, described that has been associated with a, a 6P25.3 uh, translocation that fuses the DUST22 or RF4 uh, gene locus with the unknown partner uh, gene. Um, and so uh, fish studies were done at the uh, by the referring institution and did show that that skin specimen did have the dust 22 uh, translocation so that morphology fits perfectly uh, with the cytogenetics uh, on the other hand the second uh, skin biopsies and these are shave biopsies um, shows a much less dense lymphoid infiltrate and uh, a little bit that's perivascular in the superficial dermis. And then up here in, uh, along the basement membrane, you can see some of these dark blue cells. So that is uh, what we would call tagging of uh, lymphocytes along that uh, basement membrane. And this is a pattern that you might see in uh, early mycosis fungoides. So with the uh, immunostain uh, for CD3, it brings out the very nice tagging of the, uh, on the basement membrane for the, the T cell marker CD3. And these cells are also positive in the perivascular area. Unlike the other skin specimen, uh, the CD4 stain here uh, will show that the T cells of interest are CD4 positive. As you can see, it's uh, traveling right along that basement membrane. Again, this is a pattern very much like what you see in early mycosis fungoides. Um, and then with the CD30 stain, which I'm sorry, just a very tiny piece of tissue left, and uh, there we go. And at higher magnification, you can see that these are CD30 positive T cells along there, albeit fairly weak. That would be a little bit uh, unusual for uh, early involvement by MF, is uh, that uh, when you have CD30 positive uh, cells in MF, it's usually associated with a large cell transformation of that disease. So that amount of CD30 along the, uh, the tagging lymphocytes uh, would be a bit unusual. And uh, so uh, from a pathology standpoint, uh, this certainly fits for uh, the uh, general diagnosis in the WHO of a cutaneous CD30 positive T cell uh, lymphoproliferative uh, disorder. Uh, but we would want to know, are the two lesions, are they related? And so could we go to the PowerPoint slide, please? And here are the uh, gene, uh, T cell receptor uh, gene rearrangement tracings. So the uh, part A, uh, right upper arm skin, compared to the, uh, and that's the one that had uh, the DUST22 translocation, the first uh, specimen we looked at. The second specimen that looked like, somewhat like early mycosis fungoides, left medial thigh. Uh, you can see these uh, two uh, clonal peaks right here. Uh, and that matches up with these two from uh, the uh, lesser infiltrative process that look like MF. So these are uh, definitely clonally related, uh, albeit different uh, appearance uh, on the um, morphology uh, and immunos. So uh, to more precisely define the process, then part A from the right upper arm skin is uh, uh, has the extensive epidermotropism plus the 6P25.3 uh, translocation that uh, was described back in 2014 and is now recognized in the WHO as 
one of the types of lymphomatoid papulosis. And then the second one uh, fits well for lymphomatoid papulosis type B, which um, uh, resembles mycosis fungoides. And this one uh, we showed did not have the 6P25.3 uh, translocation. So, uh, and they are, again, clonally related despite their different immunoarchitectural pattern. Uh, finally, uh, I'll just uh, show this slide, which uh, shows the different uh, types of lymphomatoid papulosis recognized currently uh, in the WHO. Uh, the most common type, the type A, uh, in a sense resembles uh, Hodgkin lymphoma with uh, abnormal large CD30 positive cells within a polymorphic reactive cell background. Uh, the second skin that we saw uh, would, would uh, fit for the type B, resembling MF, uh, and that's a fairly uncommon uh, form. Uh, and then these uh, other uh, forms here uh, uh, include at the very bottom the more recently described uh, pattern with 6P25.3 uh, rearrangement. Very good. It's all very simple. <laughs> So what might we do in this woman? Continue topical treatment, observe RT, BV, ultraviolet light, methotrexate, or other. So we'll open this up for uh, discussion. I think Bill's, I had some other slides summarizing that he did a much neater job of getting from A to E uh, than I did. Uh, and, uh, comments, thoughts? Right. We did mention she's responding to topical treatment. Right? Yeah, she's been responding. Yeah, considering the the, the lack of uh, little extensive, this is not very extensive treatment with topical um, agents would be reasonable. We do have, by the way, interesting clinical trial, if I can pitch it here, uh, which this patient could be eligible for. Uh, so this is the in vivo testing of different drugs and chemosensitivity to them, uh, or sensitivity to those drugs. And what we do in this study, we inject, micro-inject, very small amount of different agents into the cutaneous lesions, and also nodal disease, by the way. And uh, we can actually observe local responses to those. So uh, rentoximab vedotin, for example, is included in it. Uh, we have HVAC inhibitors. We have uh, steroids. Uh, we have, we have um, um, uh, PD-1 inhibitors, which would be quite interesting. They were tested in this setting, to my knowledge. But you, know, you can actually test the whole panel of different agents in different cutaneous lesions and see for local response. Uh, so if she would be interested, uh, this would be a potential um, uh, a trial for her. Very good. Interesting, yeah. She's has pretty limited disease at this time, and uh, it's also not disfiguring disease. And so I think she's pretty comfortable with the clobetazole approach at this time. Um, but, uh, Bill, how unusual is it to, uh, I actually didn't realize type A was more than 80% because in some of the older papers it wasn't quite that distribution. Um, those were 20 years ago or so, but um, how unusual is it to see kind of two diseases in one in effect? Uh, in not, these. not terribly unusual when you get uh, multiple biopsies. Oftentimes we only see a single biopsy, but when you get multiple, it, uh, it's, uh, it's not a shocking thing. And, and so I thought this was a, a very fascinating case to bring up. We, get in, we all kind of get involved in these rare lymphomatoid papulosis cases, but this one I thought was really quite a little more unique with the two different clones or histolo histologies, uh, and then the biology as it's evolved, the DUSP-22 uh, and so forth. Uh, any other comments or thoughts? With that, I think we'll end four minutes early. So thank you all. Uh, appreciate all the input. <laughs>